And we are back with Gilbert Goodnight. I'm happy to see you, and we're going to talk to this weirdo. That nice old gentleman must be who lives here. Yes. Good guess. Hello. Gilbert. Well now, young man, and who might you be? I am Optimus Prime. Actually, I see absolutely no point in lying. Teetotaler was funny, but... I'm eh. Gilbert Goodmate. Who are you? I'm Lipton, Sir Reginald Philibert Lipton, to be precise. All right, good for you. Is that all you say? So, would you fancy a spot of tea? No, thanks. Yeah, dude, don't refuse tea. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm nothing, really. You see, I have no need. I'm quite comfortably retired. I served the better part of my life as an officer with the army of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. God rest her soul. I earned my title and was given sufficient lands which, when sold, left me well enough supported to pursue my interests in retirement here. Good for you. You sure drink a lot of tea. Yes, well, it's a habit I picked up while I was in the Orient in Her Majesty's service. Have you been in any great battles? As an officer of the Crown, I took part in countless battles, and indeed, there were many that would, from a historian's perspective, be called great. Though, neither I nor the other men who fought in them would share quite the same sentiment. I bet it's well fun said. to kick butt on the battlefield. I admit, there is a certain amount of pleasure to be had in victory. But in my experience, war has always been the most horrifying of endeavors. I would almost say it was unfortunate. Except that I find myself enjoying the profits of a long and successful military career. And of course there was the Battle of Funky Sioux. The Battle of Funky Sioux? My men and I had been assigned to Emperor Hassan to trace down what we were told was a small band of brigands who had taken the Emperor's daughter hostage. We gave chase and caught up with the brigands in the Funky Sioux Valley, where it suddenly became clear that we had been grossly misinformed of their numbers. What did you do? That army of thieves was led by the great tactician Wao Pimbu. We faced a numerically superior force with a vastly superior knowledge of the terrain, with the defenders' advantage and thanks to the Emperor's underestimation having the element of surprise. There was only one thing to do. Is there a point to this, old man? You attacked the flank? No, we turned around, marched right back to the Emperor, and convinced him to pay the pittance they'd asked for his daughter in the first place. Hmm. So you lost? On the contrary. If we'd attacked the brigand army, outnumbered as we were, we would surely have met with defeat. Dishonoring the Emperor and Wao Pimbu would only have demanded an even larger sum for the return of the Emperor's daughter. As it happened, the Emperor paid the ransom. His daughter was returned unharmed, and my men and I were greatly rewarded. What did you get? The Emperor knew of my love for tea, and he gave me his entire supply of the rarest black tea in the world. Really? What's it called? It has no name. Although, in fact, it is known to tea connoisseurs as the unnamed tea. There was an old legend about a variety of Camellia sinensis that's the evergreen all teas are made from, that once grew on a mountain overlooking the Funky Sioux Valley. It is said that the leaves of this plant were so full of flavor that nothing else could grow within a mile of the plant without taking on some of the same bitter taste. The aroma from the plant was so powerful that only a few ever dared to steep its leaves. The unnamed tea was so full of flavor it made all other teas seem like water. But it was terribly bitter and had to be sweetened. And its leaves were so fragile that once dried and crushed, they turned into a powder as fine as talc. Mystery tea is not all that Why mysterious. wasn't the unnamed tea ever named? I suppose it might have had a name once, but no one knows what it was. The plant that produced the unnamed tea disappeared from the mountain near the Funky Sioux Valley long, long ago. Which is why it was incredible that Emperor Hassan had some of the unnamed tea in his possession. Apparently, it had just been discovered in his treasure vaults, where it must have sat forgotten for hundreds of years. Don't drink hundred-year-old tea. Seriously. Have you tasted the unnamed tea yet? Unfortunately, no. 
It is indeed as fine a powder as the legends say, and I've never found a filter fine enough to make it. I'd need something to sweeten it with as well. I don't normally sweeten my tea, but for the unnamed tea, I'd have to make an exception. Can I borrow your VIP card? Sorry, I need to call on Vandersteen almost every day. This bridge is quite old, and with the moisture from the river, things are always in need of repair. What's your favorite tea? Oh, dear me, there are so many that I like, I don't think I possibly could choose. I've always enjoyed green tea, and I doubt I would ever get to bed at night without my chamomile. Mint tea always makes me feel good, and dung thistle always has a unique, refreshing taste. However, I suppose I'd have to say my favorite blend is Earl Grey. Why haven't you tasted the unnamed tea yet? Because I don't have a filter that's fine enough, and I don't have anything to sweeten it with. What's so interesting about tea? I must say, tea is the most interesting thing there is. In addition to being the perfect beverage, it has countless other uses. For instance, it's a wonderful astringent. If you suffer from smelly feet, just soak them in a bowl of warm tea, once or several times a day for a few days. Then soak them for about 15 or 20 minutes once a week, and they'll smell wonderful. What else can you do with tea? They say it makes a wonderful hair dye. If you're the sort who doesn't like the thought of going grey, I've never tried it, mind you. Showing the grey has never bothered me at all. Even with grey hair, I'm just as sexy. What else can you do with tea? Well, you can use mint tea to wash your face. I like spearmint, but peppermint will work just as well. It really gets into the pores for a deep, fresh, clean feeling. Have you traveled to any exotic lands? Oh, yes. I've been to Kenya, Argentina, Sri Lanka, China, India, Indonesia, Turkey, Australia, Egypt, and Japan. Now he's just listing places. Do you still like to travel? No, I'm afraid my traveling days are well behind me. Of course, I still enjoy reading my travel books. And I have some friends who travel, and they send me letters from time to time. I go traveling by proxy now, I guess you might say. This guy can talk. All right, I'm well, Lipton, here. I have to go. Right, well, tally ho, and always remember, you're unique, son, just like everyone else. Basically a nice guy, if a little long-winded and kind of boring and obsessed with tea and... Actually, I like tea, but I'm not going to talk about it as much as he does. I only need a few kinds of tea at a time, seriously. Excuse me. Mm, long delay there for some reason. Alright. Oh, that's right. I still need that generosity potion fairly shortly. He still doesn't look so good. Hey, Arbor. Arbor. Hi, Arbor. Hi, Gilbert. What's that you're wearing? It's a filter the doctor gave me to help keep away the germs. It's very fine. Uh, it's a painter's mask. Can I have your filter? I need it to protect me from the germs. Maybe if I can get some miracle medicine, I won't need this filter anymore. So wait, would bullcrap medicine cure Bye, somebody Arbor. with bullcrap so symptoms? Gilbert. I don't know. It's locked. Hello? Yes? May I come in? Mm. No, you may not. I'm tired and I have to rest up for my next big show. Well, you're not very nice. What's so special about your miracle medicine? Well, it cures every illness Bull known pucky. to mankind. Everyone? Every single one, from bronchial infections to athlete's foot, pneumonia, kidney stones, bad breath, gout, you name it, it cures it. Wow. And not only that, if you take it every day, it will prevent you from getting sick. 
Really? But best of all, Dr. Fraud's miracle medicine makes you really strong. Physically impossible. Can I have a bottle you of your miracle crap. medicine? Nah, sport, you can't. I don't give away things for free, you know. But I really want one. Then you'll have to pay for it like everyone else. Just one bottle. Come on, it'll be fun. Can't you leave me alone? I'm trying to take a nap. You'll have to wait for my next show. When's that? The next show won't start until I figure out how to look. <coughs> uh, look, you'll just have to wait. Do you live in that wagon? Yes, and I try and rest in it too, but someone keeps asking me questions. Do you like poems? Well, of course, they come in handy when you're trying to get... Uh, when you're trying to sell... Uh, well, when you want to talk with the ladies. Are you really a doctor? That depends. What is a doctor to you? Uh, someone who helps other people when they're sick, I guess. Then I most certainly am a doctor indeed. You bullcrap again. You're... How do you carry your stage around in such a small wagon? Yes, it looks big and solid, doesn't it? But it's a collapsible stage specially designed for travelling shows like mine. Oh, sure, you have about 378 pieces to put together, but it's really easy to take apart. And that's important for those times when you get to run out with the, uh, when you need to change a location in a hurry. Where'd you get it? I ordered it from Johnson & Smith's Furniture and Gun Kits catalogue. Oh, yeah, really ah, come on! Just one bottle, please! Oh, you just don't give up, do ya? Why don't you... Wait, wait just a minute. I think this might actually be a little opportunity wrapping up my door. I've decided to give you a bottle of my miracle medicine, son! Great! Awesome. All you have to do is help me put on my next show. Ah... Uh... How can I do that? Well, you see, my partner, Strong Bert, well, he left me after a tragic accident when we visited the Viking village up north. He got upset when I didn't pay, uh, didn't, well, well, he left after a tragic accident. And I'm afraid it's left me in a bind. People keep asking to see the strong man, but I haven't found anyone in Fungoria strong enough to play the part. Hmm. Why do you need someone strong? Because nothing says buy me like a hands-on, up-close, real-life demonstration. Without a good demonstration of what the miracle medicine can do, people just aren't ready to buy it. So all I have to do is drink your medicine, and I'll be strong like Strong Bert was. Uh, no, nah, well, eventually, yes, I mean, it took years for the medicine to, uh, make Strong Bert that strong. But what we need is a demonstration of how strong you could get after taking the medicine for a long time. Sort of a creative demonstration, if you know what I mean. But wouldn't that be lying? Look, kid, you want the miracle medicine or not? Uh, I guess so. Then find me someone strong enough to do the job. He's a fraud, Gilbert. What's your miracle medicine made of? I'm afraid I can't divulge the secret list of ingredients. Why not? Because no one would drink it if they know what it was made of. Uh, it wouldn't be able to um, help as many people all that way. You are far too Okay, bye. Do it's about time. Great. Hey, honestly. It's almost like being stupid is a prerequisite for adventure game heroes. In many cases. The heroines usually get to be intelligent. Like Cynthia and so forth. It's very light. Must be aluminum. Aluminum. Aluminium. I'll just the shove these balsa wood balls the onto the ends of this aluminum bar. Ta-da! An impressively large weight bar that I can actually lift. Yeah, I made a fake dumbbell. It's a glow-in-the-dark pal. Glow-in-the-dark pal. Hey, cool! When I cover it with my hands, it glows. I think I'd better save it for later. Excuse me again, it's probably sleep time soon. Anyway, I have not had much to really involve myself with in this episode other than clicking Lipton's and the Doctor's long, boring diet. Well, not boring, long. I don't think it works like that. But not particularly overly interactive menu options. Hello? Yes? I'm ready to help you put on your show. So, you found a strong man for me then? Well, not exactly. Sort of. So, what do you got? 
I've got a phony barbell that's light enough for me to lift with one hand. Hmm, you know, that just might do the trick. When a crowd sees a skinny fellow like you, why, it's a brilliant idea. Simply stupendous. Now, here's what I want you to do. You can even legally Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. You are about to witness a demonstration of the eighth wonder of the world, Dr. Fraud's Miracle Medicine. But first, let me tell you a little bit about this wonderful elixir. Now, most of you have your own traditional remedies for things. My mother was fond of cod liver oil. And they work fine for some things, but wouldn't it be nice to have something that work for everything that ever ails ya? Well folks, this is it. I travel the world to collect every folk remedy, every traditional family cure, or every single last recipe for chicken soup. I visited the monks of Tibet, the healers of the Americas, the head doctors of all the finest universities, and I have talked with their grandmothers too. And I put all that knowledge together, all those years of research, into making a product that would finally put an end to the sicknesses of mankind. And that product is none other than Dr. Fraud's Miracle Medicine! Now, I know what some of you are thinking. How can you trust a man with a name like Dr. Fraud? Well, I'll tell you. Having a name like that hasn't always been easy. I know a lot of folks will make up their minds about me before they even give themselves a chance to hear me talk. But when I was just a young man, my mother said to me, Cornelius, now don't you let your last name get in the way of being a great man. Rise above your name, Cornelius, and show the world what a trustworthy, honest and honourable man you are. My mama believed in me, God bless her soul. And when you try Dr. Fraud's miracle medicine, why, you'll be a believer too. Folks, this may be hard to believe, but Dr. Fraud's miracle medicine is the last medicine you'll ever have to buy. It cures every illness known to mankind. Every single one from bronchial infections to athlete's foot, pneumonia, kidney stones, bad breath, gout, you name it. It cures it. Folks, this medicine is the real thing. Does it help with planters' warts? Um, my friend has them. Just one drop of Dr. Fraud's miracle medicine burns them up and dries them off. Does it help with cramps? Does it help with PMS? It puts an end to both. Dr. Fraud's miracle medicine has saved more marriages than I could ever count. What about bladder infections, gallstones, ulcers, diarrhea, intermittent nausea? Frontal headache, chronic fatigue syndrome, arthritis, botulism, leprosy, cancer, carpal tunnel syndrome, retroocular pain, leprosy, amnesia, diabetes, affluenza, influenza, appetite loss, malaria, narcolepsy, rabies, narcotizing fasciitis, polyarteritis, nodosa, depression, nightmares, tularemia, multiple chemical sensitivity and your spontaneous human combustion. He treats all of that and more. And to top it off, Dr. Fraud's miracle medicine taken daily will make you unbelievably and incredibly strong. Even if you're a pencil-necked geek? Hard to believe? Well, how about a live demonstration then? But first, I should like to tell you about today's special. With every bottle of Dr. Fraud's Miracle Medicine you purchase today, you'll also receive the world's smallest juice press free. Now watch this nine stone weakling lift that incredibly heavy barbell. Go ahead, son. Have a sip of the Miracle Medicine and see what you can do. Oh my God. <sighs> Now, yeah. folks, you know it isn't a medicine if it don't taste horrible. He has been talking wow. for five minutes straight. And you could be just as strong with a daily dose of Dr. Fraud's Miracle Medicine. Here, yeah, son. I'd hate to see you have to lose your strength now that you've had a taste of Dr. Fraud's Miracle Medicine. Here's a bottle just for you, free of charge. 
and of course you get a world's smallest juice press. And while I'm at it, here's a bottle of starch. Uh, hey, thanks. Now, who's going to be the first to take advantage of this incredible offer? I'll buy a bottle. I'll buy two. Free stuff is good, and all we had to do is con a crowd of little old ladies. It's Seriously, Dr. Fraud's powerful, healthy, hearty miracle all medicine. All it cost us was our soul. Sleepy. It's a bottle of starch. It's not really a bottle, is it? It's the world's smallest juice press. In fact, it's so small. Yes, I've just lost it. <laughs> oh, Gilbert. Here, I don't want to drink this. Hey, Arver, did you get some miracle medicine? No. Dr. Fraud said he would have given me a deal, but he sold out before I could talk to him. Well, I could give you my bottle. Really? Sure. Wow. I can't wait to try it. Do you still want my filter? I won't need it anymore. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Thank you for watching. Please. I think I've heard enough like, about how sick he is for a while. Or, you know, not. I'm not the boss of you. Good night, everybody. I'm tired.